Okay, hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Fouad. I work uh, at Google, mainly on uh, Android systems, PKVM. And this is a joint presentation with Elliot from Qualcomm. Elliot is currently in San Diego. He couldn't make it in person. He should be online, so hopefully, um, uh, yeah, if you have any questions related to Gunia or any difficult questions for that matter, please direct them at Elliot. Easy questions, I'm ready to answer them. Anyway, so the main topic for today or for the coming uh, sessions until lunchtime is get MemFD. As uh, Paolo said, is that MemFD came around, it hasn't really been upstream for a year, but it's already seemed like it might become kind of a de facto um, uh, standard for presenting guest memory, at the very least for confidential computing, which is uh, pretty good and pretty interesting and is really exciting seeing that there's a lot of uh, people interested in it. And um, yeah, this is uh, going to be the main topic for now. And um, sorry, let me just figure out how to switch slides. Ah, okay, there it is, yeah. Okay, so I presented LTC last year talking about mainly MMAP and a lot has happened since then. So since then, there have been a lot of uh, topics and whether we would be able to map guest memory or at least shared guest memory into host user space wasn't really a given, but since then we have been talking about um, mapping into host user space, support for huge pages, um, uh, page migration, compaction, and a lot of interesting topics. And initially when I submitted uh, the proposal for today, I was prepared that I was gonna mainly be talking about um, motivating why we need Nmap, motivating why we need huge pages, and that was really all the intention. But since after I submitted the proposal and before now, uh, there was a Linux uh, memory uh, management alignment session in July, which is very interesting. I recommend that everybody who wants to get more into this topic, um, if you follow the link in the slide, you could actually see um, the, the notes and the video for that talk. So all of this was covered and pretty much I think we came to the consensus that all of these topics are topics we wanna support in Gessman FD. The question is really how, and because of that, that's it. My talk is over. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, that made me kind of like pivot the talk. Today, I'm going to be mo mainly talking about support of mapping guest memory into host user space. Um, afterwards, Vishal is going to be talking about huge page support. Later on, Patrick, I think, is going to be talking about remo removing guest memory from the host kernel. And finally, James will cover post copy live migration. Question before you go on. Yeah. How much time do we want to spend talking about making GuestMemFD a library? Because that might actually be more contentious than the MMAP stuff. Oh, okay. And I'm guessing Elliot cares a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. It's really, yeah. Uh, so to be honest, I wasn't really planning on talking that much about it because uh, for two reasons. First of all, it's mainly. I mean, well, I, let me go to that slide. Uh, actually. What do you mean by library? You mean moving it to MM? MM guest MMFD. Yeah, moving it to MM. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, at least I'm fine with that. So I guess problem solved, yeah. So, but, just to, <laughs> <laughs> but just to give you some background on what this is, so yeah. this is talking about the slide. So this is mainly motivated by Elliot, and the reason is that Elliot works on Gunia, a different uh, hypervisor from KVM. And uh, the idea is that currently, as guest MFD, the logic that's related to KVM and the memory management related logic, handling folio, stuff like that, it's all in the same code. And mainly to be able to use it in Gunia, as well, ah, oh, sorry, mainly to be able to use it in Gunia, as well as uh, now as we see, guest MFD is uh, becoming more interesting for not just um, Intel and different flavors of Intel, uh, PKVM, um, ARM CCA abstracting some of that logic away or abstracting the folio handling and the memory management handling logic away seems like it would be a good idea. So this is the past series that Elliot has submitted where he mainly uh, does that work. So yeah, before I guess I go on, is there any question or comments about this? So I guess David said that he's happy with it, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, conceptually, I like the idea. My concern is mainly around maintenance and Velocity. Mm -hmm. If 
I mean, already the patch series is quite stale because we've been iterating on guest MFD to make it work better for SMP and all the other stuff. So how are we going to keep chugging along on KVM without getting into a fight with Gunya every other week? So um, I, I, I mean, I guess I can't. Go ahead. Oh, cool. Uh, so I don't know why my, my web my 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 webcam is not working today. Um, but I guess the idea is that we would abstract away all the guest MFD stuff that's uh, hypervisor specific, uh, and then we can just add new features to to guest MFD, the library, uh, for doing things like page allocation. So I guess I I haven't seen anything other than like adding new allocator. For like, for instance, huge TLDFS um, or THP support, or if we're doing CMA, you know, all those things are pretty generic and don't need to be mapped directly into what KVM does. Um, so I guess, did you have a specific feature in, in mind that you were thinking we would have to butt heads about? Um, the idea was we wouldn't be butting heads. Not necessarily a specific feature, but being able to tailor the guest MFD implementation to KVM's exact needs, so avoiding all of the abstraction does make the code a little easier to understand and to modify. So no specific concern, but just generally. Yeah, one thing that uh, I was thinking about these days was also related to the uh, trusted IO where we, we are going probably to have, uh, as I was saying before, code that m builds the IOMMU page tables in the same way that uh, KVM is building the EPT page tables. So I was thinking that we would probably have to replace some of the callbacks into KVM with uh, some kind of notifier where KVM registers one, in one notifier for itself and IOMMU FD registers another notifier for itself. So that would also move the code a lot more towards having something like a library. You may call it a library, you may call it something else, but in, in, in general, I don't think we actually have it even a choice uh, if we are to support Trusted.io. We could just not support Trusted.io. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, let's go on with the map unless other people have questions. Okay, so the other part, which is what I'm gonna be focusing the most on today, is support of mapping guest memory into host serial space. Now, just a quick recap. Why do we, why would we like to do that? So, Gunya and PKVM, for example, they protect host and guest, uh, sorry, they protect guest memory from the host and each other using stage two, which in intern uh, Intel parlance is EPT page table. So essentially it's all software based. So converting between something, between a page being shared or private, it's really just about changing permissions. We don't need, to, it's not two different physical memory locations. We don't need to actually copy anything. And uh, for us, and memory is not encrypted. That, that's another thing as well to mention is that we don't encrypt memory. So for us, doing conversions is actually pretty easy, pretty inexpensive, and we don't wanna lose that by supporting guest memfd. Um, we do expect some use cases in the future that would share and unshare memory quite frequently. It would make initializing guest memory um, quite a bit uh, easier and faster. However, the problem is what we, it's really important that only memory that is shared with the host can be accessed by the host or the host can be, try to access it. Memory that's private shouldn't. And here I'm not talking about protecting the guest. So the guest, as I mentioned, is protected by the hypervisor, stage two EPT. Um, I'm talking about protecting the host from itself. The problem is if the host tries to access memory that is private, the hypervisor will prevent that access and then depending on where the access came from, user space, kernel, depending again on the system that we're using, PKB, Amgonia, or Intel, it could lead to something equivalent to a machine check that would essentially result in the whole system crashing. And this is not really ideal. And this is actually the current um, state of PKVM right now is that you could actually in certain cases trigger that, which like I said, isn't really all that ideal. So ideal, so what we'd really like to do is to only map and support guffing memory that is explicitly shared. And just again, a quick side note, I say map, this was something that we talked about in the memory uh, system sync. So having the memory mapped in the VM area of the uh, user space, that that is fine. The the, what we really want to prevent is actual accesses. So for example, defaulting in on the page. 
So for optimization reasons, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We would like to map or unmap, but um, to really make sure that the fault. Um, Check memory from uh, share it back to private, but it's pinned. Like if get user pages pinned or whatever. If it's pinned? If it's pinned, like. Uh, yeah, th th this is, <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I'll, I'm getting to this in the, I'll get to this in the following slides. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, th this is this is one of the challenges, I agree. So, so what I was saying is that what we, at, at the very least, what we would like to do is when there's a page fault or when the host tries to fall in a page that is private at that point, catch that and set something like a uh, SIG bus to the, uh, to the, to the, to the process that's doing it as opposed to actually taking the whole system down. So this is really how we would like to support MMAP. So now the challenging part of this is that there's two parts. So the first one is, oh, okay. The first one is, especially on conversion, converting something from shared to private, is that how can we tell whether the host actually has any mappings of the guests? So memory was shared with the host, the, uh, the host, a bunch of user spaces have it mapped, faulted in, gupped, whatever. And now we want to merely make sure that um, to convert it back to private, that the host doesn't have any mappings. Because even if that happens for a short window, then we're back to the same problem that we were trying to solve um, from the beginning. And initially, in uh, one of the RFCs that I sent, I was using Folio mapped and Folio DMA is pinned, but then David pointed out that that's not really enough because you have other cases or other ways of accessing memory that doesn't increase the map count or the gut count, for example, the M splice or uh, reads through proc uh, mem and stuff like that. So really, what we should be using is the ref count. And here is the other thing, is that the ref count, what is the base ref count? I mean, there are what, um, and this was what Elliot and David were calling safe references, safe references as in references that to these guest pages that we know are safe. So references, for example, that the guests themselves have taken or other references that we trust are not really taken by the host or a host user space. And we should use that as um, sort of a reference. And if we have more references than we expect, we know that someone in the host is accessing them. But if the reference count is at that number, then we can be safe that no one in the host is accessing that memory and we could convert it back to private. Now, so, sorry? Um, the thing is currently, to be honest, yeah, that's a very good question. Currently, we don't have it. Uh, sorry, uh, the question was, how common is conversion between shared and private and back? And to be honest, currently in uh, the use cases that we actually have in PKVM, we don't have any actual users that convert from private, sorry, from shared back to private, but we do envision that to happen in the future and we have future use cases that we're expecting would actually, or could actually do that. So, so that, that's the reason I asked the question is because I think it's a very rare conversion. We, we have a case for manufacturing shared memory we almost have no shrinkers that give shared memory back to private. And if we keep it that way, since this is the most difficult thing to do, it, you could possibly just cut this out and just say it's illegal for a guest to convert. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd love to do that, but practically speaking, we can't kill the guest, essentially. We can't start taking memory away from the guest because the guest screwed up. We don't have, an AB, we don't have the luxury of creating that ABI, practically speaking. When we do a device pass through, will we not make memory private again when it is no longer mapped for DMA? Mm. Devices, if, uh, if it doesn't use software TLB, but uh, dynamically convert memory to share it on DMA allocations when allocation is returned back to the guest kernel, guest kernel will return back it to private state. So there is pass to convert it back to private. Uh, and yeah. And my worry is that uh, it adds ability to the host to block those conversions. So if host would pin this memory, uh, then this conversion will fail for, for the guest and like might trigger 
Yeah, so this is actually one thing that I covered. I didn't, I'm not going to, I didn't go through it this year because I covered it actually in LTC last year is what to do on that, what to do because yeah, that's the thing. The guest, the guest wants to convert it, take it from shared back to private. The host can't or won't release all the references, all the guts or whatever. And what do we do in that case? And this was something that I talked about last year. So one option, for example, is to go back to the guest and tell the guest, sorry, the conversion failed. You need to deal with it somehow. You need to, I don't know, use other memory if you really, that memory is sensitive. And that has some downside so is that if the guest doesn't actually check that, then the guest might end up using that memory anyway. And uh, what, is your, information. what is the current trend though? Is that still the plan? Has the plan changed? Uh, the, plan ha the plan hasn't changed in the sense that both options are still on the table and uh, the code that I currently have actually has kind of support for both that option and the alternative option, which is if the host refuses to release any of the references, we exit back to the host and refuse to run the guest until the host has actually released that. But then that has problems because if we especially go into stuff like multi-sharing, the host could simply not have control over that memory. The host, even if it wants to, simply might not be able to do that. And yeah, so this is really still, the thing is going back to the question I got earlier, we don't really have any clear, or we don't have any, sorry, we have few clear future use cases, but only ha we don't have any actual use cases. And therefore, I think until we have actual use cases, deciding which option of these two is better is, um, I'm not really sure if it's um, all that obvious, to be honest, at least not to me. Uh, yeah? So I, I I know we've talked about this before, like one of the alignment calls. These are the wrong APIs to do what you're talking about here. You, 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 we already have a reliable ref count. You need to drive the page ref count to zero yeah, before that's you make it. No, you can't drive it to zero. That's yes, what I, no, you have to drive it to zero. That's yeah. the only way that this works. No. Yeah, it has to be zero. You need to get it to no rate. No, to zero. No, you, you don't have to get it to see. I know what you're going to with zone device and all of that, but I mean, we, we kind of do that. But it, it's efficient if you can drive it to one or to a safe ref count. But why? It's never worked. It didn't work in it, it never worked for zone device. And why do you have to keep a ref count? You're already holding onto the memory because you got it from the huge TOB allocator. You don't no, need to have a ref count. We're not talking about huge TOB here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but going back, like if if it's ever really a problem that we kind of convert from shared to private, it it might be that we simply let go of the page and replace it by a fresh page. Yeah, th then then you have the problem though of that the memory become incoherent, but that's another option as well. Yeah. Well, like um, yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. So uh, like uh, replacing with a fresh page is kind of a cop out, but we have the problem of double consumption uh, between uh, shared and private pages. If the pri if the shared page happens to be pinned, and I was kind of hoping to fix that <laughs> this way. So yeah. <laughs> well, but I mean, here we're talking about it's under the host control. The host cares about double memory consumption, and if it pins memory for some reason, then it's like it's under user space control. Not entirely, because you can have uh, the guest that uh, s gives uh, access through DMA, DFIO, whatever, to memory that was shared, and then turns it to private before shutting down uh, DFIO. And, and then the, the shared page remains mapped, and it won't work, but it consumes memory on the host. If the VM has done something like that, then fail it. And the VM gets a failure code and leaks the memory. Like it's it's a VM bug. Like we, we don't need to over engineer this. Mm. Right. Yeah, I mean that's one of the options that I suggested as well and that I have in my RFC as well. Yeah, is that you just simply consider it as a failure of uh, You'd have to reside in this case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the on the point of safe ref count and ref count going to zero, I, I think I have a we have a use case in the next topic for actually driving to zero in, in context of uh, 1G pages. Um, that would solve some issues, but uh, the reason we don't, w it, can somebody explain why we don't, uh, why would we don't want to drop it to zero? I mean, w what? So, so the basic issue is as soon as you get your ref count to zero, it will go back to the page allocator. 
So we have to huge to be special casing and we're not gonna follow huge to be models here. That is out of, out of the question. Uh, so, so, so the question, the one thing we discussed was to use zone device and it might be perfectly reasonable if you have one gigabyte pages because then you can just mark it, it's a single zone, but like for individual pages we allocated from the page allocator, that's not gonna fly. Right, this is also the problem. I, if you're driving the ref count to, to one, let's say, right. you still need the threads that are doing the put to signal a completion when it gets to one. And that ends up being in the hot bath, or you just don't do that. I don't think that you need to signal anything. I think we're not running into the zone device that the page is free. The page is still allocated. It's still in the guest MFD part, and it holds a single reference, or you have some safe references. It, it's not the zone device issue that you have to signal something and intercept that. It, it's, it's a different issue because the page is still getting used inside guest MFD. It's just an, a page cache that holds a reference. It, it, it's not quite right. It depends how you imagine you're driving it down to, to one. Like, so there are things out there holding references, like VFAO, perhaps, like your say, example. Just say if it's free. So if it's fail, then that's easy, that's easy, just do that, that's no problem. Well, if I can find the uh, Yeah, but if you're, if you're waiting in a multi-threaded way for somebody else to let go of their concurrent right. because it's VFIO and you've singled no, it through a the command queue or something like that, like, no, are you sure that you don't have that issue? That you're not waiting for a VFIO to unpin it because you're doing an IO MMU unmap that's been queued and flushed and all that other nonsense. I think it's, I'm not sure I have, have that issue because like I said, the whole thing of actually unsharing memory isn't in any active uh, use case. So I tell you that I'm sure we don't have that issue. No, I can't. I don't think we do, but I'm not sure, no. To the question about the IO MMU stuff, can we just punt that to user space? Like don't even retry in the kernel if it's not at one, like if anything has a mapped we just say, nope, you can't convert this dish private yet. If we add some kind of notifiers, like I was kind of mentioning before, you just have a notifier that says just release all the references you have. And if after that you still have a ref count of two, tough luck, return it easy or whatever it is to the guest. How would you want to notify? Hmm? I, how, how would you? Yeah, how, how would you figure out who to notify? They are doubling. I guess, I guess that depends. I, I would say, I guess it depends how you wire up the IO MMU with guest MFD. And I've been telling people, I imagine that you guys will hook up some sort of ops, like, like IO MMU FD will go to the guest MFD and say, I want your memory. Here's some ops. If you want to like, you know, revoke the memory or something, you can call me and I'll fix it for you. Like, is that, can we, is that what people are thinking? It's definitely what I was thinking. <laughs> so anyway, w there is a break now, so we can actually go on forever or, or until noon. <laughs> but if people want to take a break, like feel free to go out and uh, we can like, f we can say that the session formally finishes now, but we can go on con also talking on the microphone for people that are virtual.